Welcome to the live post-game show. The Miami Hurricanes get a buzzer beater from Charlie Moore at half court to win 78-75 over Virginia Tech. Very exciting game for, for Miami. Teams go back and forth, and Miami improves to 4-1 and one on the road. But all excitement is going to be with Charlie Moore, the shot he hit. Jordan Miller corralled the rebound after a miss by Virginia Tech. They call timeout, 1.8 seconds left. Basically get an easy shot for Charlie Moore. Takes one dribble right outside the half-court line, and he sinks the game winner. We will go straight to post-game interviews from Jim Malarnega and players. I assume Charlie Moore is going to be made available to the media in this one, but definitely drop in the comments. Let me know what you think about this game. What did you like about it? How excited are you for this team? Miami gets the win and proves to 15-4. and four. 15, 15 and 5, I apologize. 15 and 5, but 7 and 2 in the ACC leads the conference. It's a tight battle up at the top with Duke and Florida State as well. But Miami gets the win tonight, a huge one tonight. A lot of positives. I felt like it's tough to win on the road in the ACC. Obviously, Miami did well defensively in the first half, creating the 11 turnovers and had a 36 31 lead at halftime. And then it goes back and forth. Virginia Tech was hot in the second half. They were at up over 70% from the field for most of the second half. They finished their uh, – we could look right here. They shot 60% in the half, what they finished with. But for out the, throughout the half, they, they were shooting the ball well, really knocking down three-pointers. You see the 13 three-point shots that they made. So a lot of things going right for Virginia Tech, and Miami stayed with it. You know, uh, and you can see right there at the end, the 8-0 run that Miami had at the last couple minutes to to get the win. Um, Virginia Tech was was doing well offensively. Miami was down, I think it was 75-70 there with that, yeah, with that 8-0 run. You know, Jordan Miller gets a layup. Cam uh, McGusty was playing well down the stretch as well, but Isaiah Wong draws a, three, a foul on a three-point shot, gets three free throws, makes them all with 109 left to tie it at 75 just to stay in the game down the stretch. So good win for Miami. I know Jim Laranega is going to say this is a terrific game. He's also going to say that he expects every ACC game to go down to the wire. Another bounce back performance by Miami after that tough loss to Florida State where they were down as many as 26 and only lose by one last game. But they bounce back to get the win tonight, 78-75. Miami has not lost consecutive games this year. I think that says a lot about this team and their ability to bounce back uh, I think that's great. You know, certainly you always want to keep winning, and, and coaches talked about this before. Just go one and zero, get the win, move ahead. Or if you lose, keep moving on. And, and I think that's a, that's what this team has done. I think that's what this team did in the second half. Even though Virginia Tech was making shots, it didn't look good at times. They were making three pointers. A lot of guys were involved. I do want to show you here. So the 13 three pointers by Virginia Tech. You know, seven different players. So a lot of guys getting involved getting involved with their uh, with, with the scoring there. So I do want to make sure that we're locked in here with the post-game interviews. Typically, Jim Nega will come first. If you're new to this, definitely appreciate everybody for being here. Just waiting on the Zoom to open up here. And I definitely wanted to go quick today because last time, or one of the times Miami's played on the road, Larry came out quick and did his post game press conference. So I just wanted to make sure that we get in here, get some get some um, feedback from him. And like I said, I think Charlie Moore will talk as well. Overall, good performance offensively. You see all five starters in double figures from Miami. Cam Augusti, 17 of his 19 points in the second half. Charlie Moore, not just that he hit the three, obviously a huge shot, but finishes with 13 points, a six assist, and the five steals. It's really impressive with what he's able to do with the turnovers, creating turnovers and the steals, and, and that continued tonight. So that was good to see. Also hit the three three-pointers in that that half-court shot. And if you guys are watching the game, I think you saw Jordan Miller there who got the rebound. Then they called timeout, and it felt like on the bench, he felt like he could have taken that shot. So I assume typical teams, they, they practice the half-court shots. They, they have competitions after practice or sometimes before, but I, I assume that they, they take these shots and – and Charlie got his and, and took advantage. Didn't have a lot of pressure, obviously. Um, Virginia Tech's going to let him shoot that, and um, he made it. So huge win for Miami. I, I hope people are excited about this team. There's a lot to be excited about, not just to, for hitting buzzer beaters, but they're 7-2 in the ACC. Whatever you thought of this team beforehand, 
I think what you've seen is a team that's grown, a team that that has uh, really good strengths that that make it hard on teams. And, and I felt like that's what you saw tonight with the guards. Again, Moore had his productive game. Isaiah Wong makes it tough again, hitting those free throws late. He's tough to guard. And then Cam Mcgusty. Once again, we've seen this with these guards where even if they're slow in one half or the other, they can get points in bunches. It's really hard to hold these guys down for the course of a game. And that's what you saw today. That's what you saw tonight. You know, Mcgusty was able to to really get it going. And you know, this team doesn't um, this team doesn't stop. You know, they don't. Um, they're not. They're not going to be content. I, I feel like this is a very hungry team. I, I'm not sure exactly where they think they can. I asked Isaiah last game about where he thinks this team is, and certainly he feels like they're one of the better teams in the ACC, and that certainly has changed as the season's gone on. But they're a pretty confident group. You know, they don't want to go back to what it was the last few years. A lot of these guys, are, I've talked about this, a prideful group of guys, guys that have been around college basketball a lot. You heard Sam Wardenberg talk last game after losing the second straight game to Florida State, he's like, I want to see these guys hopefully in the in the ACC tournament. He just wants to beat them after that long streak. So this is a group that that wants to do well, wants to keep winning, and, and you're seeing this team play well. So overall, good performance tonight. Cer- certainly there's things to tighten up, particularly on defense. I thought the defensive pressure on the perimeter uh, was lacking, which led to Virginia Tech getting comfortable and, and getting it going there. But overall, you know, it's tough to win on the road. And you saw the Virginia Tech crowd. They had it going, a lot of energy in the crowd. And I thought Miami did a good job of just kind of staying in front early. Um, and then kind of didn't, you know, there was a point where it felt like it was six points by Virginia Tech, the lead. It felt like Virginia Tech was just hitting shots. Is it going to get to eight to 10 to 12 and kind of get away from Miami? And it didn't. You know, Miami kept making shots, kept staying within striking distance. And then, like I said, when it was 75 70, you get the layup by, by Miller there. And then the free throws by Isaiah, a couple stops here and there. And, you know, you see it right there. Virginia Tech did not score over the last two minutes and 24 seconds. So really big win overall for Miami. Once again, just waiting on Coach Larinaga here. And usually, uh, you know, usually, you know, sometimes they don't have players speak afterwards, but... Um, with this win, and like I said, with Charlie Moore's big shot, I I, I assume he'll uh, he'll talk. So uh, very curious to see what he has to say. And, and it was just an exciting game. I can't remember a shot like that in, in a while. Um, a half court bu- buzzer beater. It's going to be a top ten play. It's going to be one of the top plays of the year for Miami. Uh, not just to hit it, but to win it. You know, to to win a game on that shot is really impressive. But overall, um, I touched on the the positives with Miami starters. Again, the bench, you know, just they're having these games occasionally. You see the four points um, from three guys off the bench, not getting a lot of production there. But, you know, and and it's not just the points, you know, no no rebounds from the group, one assist. So Anthony Walker did have that nice, um, he finished with three steals. So here we go. Got Coach Laranega here. Recording in progress. Charlie, can you hear us? Yeah, here you go. All right, great. Um, before Coach L tonight, co- folks, we have uh, Charlie Moore at the buzzer beater. If you have questions for Charlie, please use the hand raise function. We'll start with the Miami Herald. Hey, Charlie. Um, can you just take us through that last play, just like what the design was there? Obviously, it worked. seemed like it worked perfectly. Can you just kind of run us through everything that went into that? Yeah, uh, you know, the coach set up a great play. Um, they had Sam set a screen close to half court and wanted me to loop around. And, um, you know, I just took one dribble. I knew I had one dribble with 1.8 seconds left. And I just wanted to get a shot up, you know, um, get a great attempt up. But, you know, I, I eventually banked it in. You know, it was a great shot. You know, I'm happy for me and my teammates and my coaches as well. Did it feel good coming off the hand? Yeah, it felt pretty good. <laughs> felt pretty good. <laughs> you know, I banked it in, hard. but I didn't know it was going to go that hard, but it was, it was pretty fun. And just, yeah, can you, like, we're not there, obviously. Well, what was that? Just, can you, your emotions when that happened? Just what was, like, the celebration, like, all that kind of stuff? 
I was excited, man. I was I just ran off the court. <laughs> My teammates followed behind me. They tackled me. Uh, it was, it was, they had a great time, you know, so I'm, I'm happy as well. Go now to Wyatt Copeland from WBUM. Charlie, congratulations on the win. Could you just talk about how much this means for your team after that 24-point um, comeback fell short on Saturday in front of a packed Watsco Center? What's the what's the morale like in the locker room? How much does this one mean for you all? Uh, it means a lot, you know, um, after the, you know, like, we started off slow last game. Um, we wanted to pick that up th this game. You know, start off with a pretty good start. You know, uh, not letting ourselves get behind. You know, I felt like we played pretty good for the for the most part. You know, uh, Virginia Tech they shot the ball tremendously well. You know, uh, they executed well. You know, it, it went down to the wire. It was a great game. Go to Chris Stock from inside the U, Chris. Yeah, Charlie. If you had a buzzer beater beater before a basketball career, just kind of when was the last one? <sighs> Um. Uh, not not a not a game winner like that. Yeah, that one that was for the books. <laughs> that one's for the ages. So, not not like that. That was that was incredible. Yeah, and just curious. Uh, do you guys take those shots, half court shots, either after practice? Do you guys play around? Do you? Is it something you kind of do? Um, just to for a feel for something like this. Uh, yeah, me and my teammates play around sometimes and shoot half court shots. You know, um, not something we really work on as much. You know, but. You know, it, it happened to go in at night. You know, I'm just happy. Anything else for Charlie? All right, Charlie, thanks for your time. Thank you. I'll have Coach Allen here in a moment. Coach, can you hear us? Yep. Great. All right, I'd like to start with an opening statement. And then we'll go into questions. I thought that was another fantastic college basketball game. Exciting from start to finish. Obviously, Charlie Moore's game-winning shot with, you know, less than one second to go was uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, I thought Virginia Tech played a, a tremendous second half. They shot the ball so well. And I, I thought our guys kind of hung in there. We, we were not playing our best, but we we were still, you know, uh, in the hunt, and uh, every chance we got, we made a, a big play. And uh, it came down to uh, the last possession, the last shot, just like it has, I think, the last four or five times we played these guys, whether it be, you know, in the Watsko Center at home or on the road here at Castle Coliseum. The, the two teams match up very well, and it's a great college basketball game. We're just thrilled to get the win. We'll go to questions now for Coach L. Please use the hand raise function. We'll start with Chris Stock from inside the yard. Yeah, you just take me through like the huddle uh, leading up to the play by Charlie, and then have you you've been around games a lot? Is there a half court shot that you remember um, that stands out to you before this one in your career? Well, it's very easy to remember the last half court shot that won the game. It was at Carolina with the score tied, and Jaquan Newton he banked it in from uh, the opposite side of what Charlie did tonight. His was on the right side. Charlie's on the left. Um, what what else, Chris? Did you ask earlier? Uh, the thought inside the huddle oh. of leading up yeah, to that play. I, I kept asking the officials about how much time was left. I thought there was going to be like two and a half, and that we were going to be on the baseline. That then when they told us that it was going to be the uh, uh, just a one point eight. We put uh, Isaiah Wong all the way down the floor so that they'd have to guard him, Jordan Miller all the way down the floor, and left Sam Wardenberg to just screen for Charlie. And we told Cam, we need to hit him on the run, so he's heading toward the basket. And Cam threw a great pass. That's, that's something that doesn't get fully appreciated, but it's not easy because they had a Luma on the ball. No, Mutz, I think, was on the ball. And a big guy like that can deflect the pass and throw off the timing of the play. But Sam did a great job screening for Charlie. Charlie did a great job of just coming hard to the ball. He caught it, one dribble, banked it in. Now to David Wilson from the Miami Herald. Yeah, it was kind of like you said, you were expecting from the baseline. You don't usually kind of see that setup. Was that, I guess, I don't remember who got the rebound, but took a couple of dribbles. So that was that was not the plan, was it, to, to take no, a actually, and set that I, up from the sideline? I told the, the referee, as soon as we get the, the rebound, we're, we're calling a timeout. And he said, well, I didn't hear anybody call it. I said, well, I told you, you, you can't hear anything in this arena. 
I could have been screaming at the top of my lungs with him looking right at me, he still wouldn't have heard me. Because this place is, is uh, to me, uh, this arena and the, the noise level, the student uh, involvement is, is really one of the toughest places to play. And one of the most fun places to play because of that enthusiasm and energy that they create. Uh, the just the emotion there after that, obviously we're not there. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a feel of like what the celebration, all that was on the court. Just can you kind of take us through what, what from your perspective, what, what that moment was tell. like? <laughs> but, but, you know, everybody from Virginia Tech was obviously in shock, whereas our guys were absolutely thrilled and ran after Charlie Moore and uh, hugged him, tackled him. I, I, I didn't actually see the, the scrum. I was busy shaking hands. I've been on the other side of these and there it's hard. It's a hard game to lose. You play really, really well and you lose a game. We had one the other day where the ball was in a weird spot again and we try to do something that didn't work. Oh, well, today was, was, you know, in our favor. Cal Freeman from Canesport. Hi, Coach. Congratulations on the win. Two questions. First, I want to start with your team's defense in the first half. You forced 12 Virginia Tech turnovers, which is over their season average in the first half alone, and then scored 18 points off of it. What was so impressive about the defense in the first half? And then to close the game, you held them without a bucket in the last 224. How much does that say about your team's defense? Well, here's, here's the thing. I haven't looked at the stats yet. Our whole strategy – was to try to force some turnovers because Aluma and Mutz are so good in around the basket and their guards are such good perimeter shooters. So kind of our game plan worked in the first half. And the second half, we're, we're not a great rebounding team, nor are we great at defending the three. And that happens to be uh, a, a major strength of theirs, their ability to stretch the floor and shoot threes with Couture and Elaine and Murphy, and even uh, uh, Mutz made a three from the corner. Aluma made a three. So when you have five guys that can stretch the floor and shoot threes, it really challenges our defense. In the last two minutes, we've been in so many of these games already. You know, just, just look at the last games. Syracuse, we won by one. At Duke, we won by two. Uh, at Florida State, we lost by one. Uh, at, at Florida State at home, we, we lost by one, you know, and now we win by uh, three. Uh, so our guys have been very, very consistently poised uh, in the last three, four minutes of games. They've been making big play after big play. we got time for two more. We'll go to Luke Cheney and back to Chris Stock. Luke, go ahead. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Can you talk a little bit about how challenging it is to play a team like Virginia Tech that's so good at shooting the three-point shot? Well, as I said, they um, overall in in the um, the whole schedule, not just conference, but overall, they're shooting like 38%. I don't know what they shot tonight, but it was a lot better than 38%, especially in the second half. And what that does as a, as a coach, you're looking at a team and saying, can we make them miss that shot? And that means stretching your defense out. But we know the moment we do that, they're going inside to Mutz and Aluma. So you got to kind of pick your poison. In the first half, we did a, a better job. In the second half, they were on fire. So it's a real challenge. Last question for Coach L. We'll go back to Chris Stock. Yeah, Coach, I want to get your take on a couple other players. Cam McGusty for him, you know, again, we've seen this, but 17 points after the break. What do you think of his performance? And then Jordan Miller gives you 18 points um, and some rebounds. Just what do you think of him tonight as well? Well, Jordan Miller got us off to a great start. He, he did everything extremely well in the first half. We And in the second half, his defense on Mutz and a couple of defensive rebounds he got were absolutely critical. And then the driving layup, he, he got fouled. He made the layup, missed the free throw, but he had an awesome game. Cam Augusti is a six-year senior playing as consistently well, I think, as anybody in the ACC. 
He, he can score the ball in many different ways. He's been defending well, rebounding very well. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think he, we're wearing him out. I, I, I'd like to give him a little more rest, so probably give him tomorrow off. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. So you heard Coach Laranega and Charlie Moore uh, talk about the game. You know, it's a big one. one I, I, one, I should have gotten another question in. I, I forgot to ask. Coach, I wrote it down here. Miami improves to 4-1 and one on the road. Uh, Miami has really struggled on the road in recent years. Um, and, and I think that's important. I think it's good. I think Miami, you know, they go to 2-1 and one in the conference on the road. Uh, just a loss to, you know, the Florida State there. But they're playing well on the road. I think that's so important for a team trying to either get to the tournament, stay at the top of the conference. Um, so they're, they're doing well. And one of the things that stood out to me, he, uh, he answered it, um, and I was thinking about asking it, but I was curious his thought on this team. Again, it felt like in the second half there were times, uh, Coach touched on it, and you could kind of tell what the, the crowd was really into it. Virginia Tech was hitting shots. It felt like if they could just get a couple more shots, they might be able to, you know, like I said, get to that double-digit lead in Miami and Laranega said they, these guys stayed poised. They, they stayed in it. I'm sure he was telling the team just stick with it because he knows it's going to come down to the wire. There's a lot of confidence in that. He's really preached that to the team um, it, throughout the season. He, he's talked about that quite a bit. So I, I'm, I'm sure that was part of it. And these guys just stayed with it and able to get this win. Again, 7-2 and two in the conference, really impressive. Uh, first nine games of the season, th this team is right in position to, to contend for a title um, with knocking off Duke in North Carolina. Um, interesting news with, with Louisville. You guys have heard me talk about Louisville throughout the year. They, they changed coaches uh, or they replaced coach. So it's interesting. You know, Wake Forest is coming up 7-3. Uh, and three. They're, they're a team to watch. Uh, I thought they were playing better before, before they faced Miami. Uh, but they're starting to get back to it. You know, they're getting some wins here. Definitely drop in the comments. Let me know if there's some things, some topics you'd like me to discuss. This is going to be a short show tonight, uh, but, but I definitely want to answer your questions. This is an exciting win, exciting time right now for, for Miami basketball fans. So again, Miami goes to 15-5 and five with the win, 7-2 and two in the ACC. Cam McGusty with the a big second half performance. Charlie Moore with the half court shot. You've got to check it out if you're just jumping on. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a lot of discussion with that. And uh, you know, coach talked about didn't know exactly when, where they were going to get the ball out. Uh, like I said, so Virginia Tech missed the three. In case you missed it, so they missed the three. Jordan Miller gets the rebound, takes a dribble or two, and then they call timeout. There were some questions you heard Laranega say, and he was telling the referee. There's usually you know with that. The way the referees are set up, there's going to be a referee right there in the backcourt on a free throw attempt. So he was telling the guy, hey, we're going to call timeout on it afterwards. So, But they didn't give it to him right afterwards. That's why Coach Laranega was saying we thought we were going to get that two and a half seconds that we'd actually have more time. But they it was 1.5. They corrected it to 1.8 and certainly gave Charlie Moore enough time to get one dribble and put up a shot. So... Char Charlie's reaction isn't a surprise when he comes on the post-game interviews or in interviews in general. He's typically pretty low-key and mellow, but you know he was really excited and celebrating with the group. I'm sure his phone's blown up, a lot of family members, a lot of... What's interesting with Charlie is just that he's got a lot of teammates that he's played with, different stops. This is his fourth college, so he's played with a lot of different guys over the years. A guy from Chicago, I know there's a lot of people excited about him and things he's been able to do this season for Miami He's certainly been a big key and had a big game tonight, not just with the game winner, but like I said, the 13 points, knocks down three threes, the six assists. It's great to see Miami 14 assists on the 29 made shots. Consistently seeing numbers like that. Cam Augusti quietly with those four assists, which is good to see. And then, you know, Jordan Miller. Coach talked about Jordan Miller. I asked him about him, what he thought about his performance tonight because, again, this team is operating really well when they get a guy like Jordan Miller or Sam Wardenberg or tonight both got it going, to be that fourth option. And those other three guys are really consistent, but to get that fourth guy and Jordan Miller showed tonight, he's we've seen this at times throughout the season, just his abilities, and it's really impressive. And 
the thing that stood out to me, not only was he hitting those threes, but that tip dunk that he had, that put back dunk there in the second half, uh, off a miss by Charlie, I thought was great. That, that's something that he quietly does well. He's very good on the boards. He's very good on the offensive boards. He's not the biggest guy, maybe about 6'7", 190, something like that, but he does a good job. And uh, I thought his play was, tonight was good. Jim Laranaga mentioned it. He carried him in the second, in the first half. I apologize. In the first half, we can look at the splits here. For Miami in the, in the first half, you see Jordan Miller had 14 points, 5 of 6 in, in the first half there. So he really got it going for them. Seven steals for Miami. Um, led to 11 turnovers and 18 points off turnovers. So really big first half for Miami. That's the performance you want when you go on the road. Play well there. Give yourself a chance. And they did that. They, they, they got it going in. Virginia Tech is a team. Not sure if you guys watched on the ACC Network, but they talked about it again that eight, Virginia Tech came into the season as kind of a trendy pick to win the conference, and they're really struggling. Uh, you know, so they're looking to find any ways to get it going, and they've just not been able to do that. They're dropped to two and seven in the conference. It's a team, two teams going in different directions. Virginia Tech's now ten and ten, but certainly you saw some ability tonight. They've just not been able to play consistently and really struggle defensively. This has been the least uh, effective defensive team in the ACC during conference games. So you saw that tonight. Miami, 78 points, 54% 50, uh, shooting in the game, 61 from three. Talk, Coach Laranaga talked a lot about what Virginia Tech was doing from three, but Miami actually shot better. They go 11 to 18 from three, so that was great to see. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. A short one tonight. Hopefully we'll be back here on Saturday. I appreciate everybody for jumping on. The live post game show. If you missed it, um, you can watch this back. I talked for maybe five, ten minutes, and then Charlie Moore came right on. So if you want to skip what I have to say and go right to the the player of the game there with the, the huge shot, the biggest shot in quite some time, uh, Coach mentioned Jaquan Newton making the half quarter at North Car or against North Carolina. So definitely thank everybody for watching. Definitely thank everybody for supporting the channel. There's a lot going on. More coming, um, more videos and things like that. So thanks again for watching.